Good day, everybody. Today's date is Friday, November the 27th, 2020. And I have with me here again, a very special man, Tim from the water shop in Burlington. Tim, how are you today? Fine. Thank you. That's terrific. Well, thank you very much for being with me again here, Tim. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with Tim and his situation, uh, he's a small business owner in Burlington here, Ontario. He has a wonderful water shop. If you need water, I highly recommend everybody goes there and gets their water from him. Uh, great service, uh, wonderful environment, and he's a, he's a great man that stood up to help all the other businesses out there from a trespass that occurred against him uh, several weeks ago. So if it's okay, Tim, I'll just give everyone a, a quick little rundown of what happened here is that uh, many weeks ago, uh, it was about three weeks ago, I guess, Tim, four weeks ago. About four, yeah. Yeah, about four weeks ago, Tim had a couple of bylaw officers that came into his store from the service corporation called the city of Burlington. And they were trespassing at that time because they started to administrate not only try to administrate against Tim in his store, but also over people that were also there, part of Tim's, uh, you know, customer base. And what happened is that uh, he upset one of the customers so much, the uh, 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 bailiff, or pardon me, the bylaw officer, is that this woman unfortunately left the store very emotional and in tears almost. And uh, Tim was not up, uh, happy at that point, obviously. So he stepped in and he basically kicked these two people out. There were two bylaw officers. They were playing like a good cop, bad cop sort of scenario. And then what happened after that is that some communication started to come to them back to Tim that they were going to come back to the store. And this was all basically drilling down on these uh, quarantine act, I guess, rules from social distancing to the mask wearing and God knows what other type of rules and conditions they're trying to impose on top of the people today. So as a result of that, uh, Tim had called me. Uh, I've been with Tim for about a, a little over a year now as a, as a customer. And uh, I told him if you ever had any problems, give me a call. So I was more than happy when he called me on this to sit down with them and to discuss moving forward. So what happened was, Tim, is that uh, when this trespass occurred, obviously it was very uh, upsetting in your store and you and I entered into a process. And it, as I explained to Tim, it was going to be three communications, three notices to the woman who acts as mayor because she's ultimately responsible for these people that work under her control at the service corporation. As being the top person there, any agents and officers under her control, she's ultimately liable should they cause any wrong or harm to another f fellow man or woman. So these two officers came into your store, Tim, as we talked about earlier, they weren't the, uh, the most kind people in what they did. And just to recap with everyone quickly, we sent out first two notices to the mayor. And uh, what happened after we sent the second notice to the mayor? There was a uh, letter that came from the city as well. Was there not at that time? Yes, there was a response from uh, the head of the bylaw. Um, I think it was a, a, a lady that uh, responded and she just responded with sending me the bylaws uh, that they have that don't apply to me. Right. So, um, we then um, ended up writing the final uh, and third notice to send to the mayor and uh, explain to her that this does not apply to us and uh, that she should educate her people on uh, what they are allowed to do and not That's to do. right. That's right. And, it, and this is a, a new experience for Tim as well. He's always known as when we started talking that, you know, he knew that something was obviously wrong in this country, in this world. Everyone sees something's wrong in the justice system, but we just don't quite understand what it is. And I think through this trespass, this uh, process that Tim has now gone through, do you have a, a much more clear understanding now, Tim, of your rights as a man with your own property and your business, as opposed to these people that are coming and acting against you from these service corporations that have no rights? Oh, for sure. It's uh, really um, put the final uh, final icing on the cake. Um, made you the made all the pieces come together with what you hear, and then to actually go through it and uh, do it. It's like, oh yeah, okay, now I understand it a lot better. Yep. Uh, so it's, it's awesome that way. I wish I didn't have to, yes. uh, but um, we did and, and that's the way it is. And so now we uh, just move forward. That's right. And, you know, I want to say to everybody too, you know, I want to thank Tim, obviously I I'll do it again at the end here, but what Tim's done here, he's done for everybody, right? Uh, he knew that there was something that was wrong and through the grace of God, we got brought together 
in this uh, experience and this trespass that occurred. So we prepared these three communications notices. We sent them out. Again, we got a response on the second one because they hadn't responded. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you this now that there was also after this third one, a man from Australia actually wrote to Mary and Mead as well. I don't think I just remembered. I don't think I forwarded that to you. He was no. following up with her because she, he knew from our discussions and live streams that she was not responding in writing, right? She was not bringing forth the honorable communication that was required for these people that were under her control, where they had jurisdiction to come into your store and do what they did. So we've done the first two letters, which you can go back and you can see. And so we're going to quickly go over the third letter here that we sent here. I'm going to do a little share screen with you here now, uh, Tim. And uh, that, should, uh, that should basically do it. Terrific. Now, do you see that, Tim? Yes. Oh. Uh, do you see the Marion Mead uh, letter? Yes. Oh, okay, that's great. I've got a screwy screen here, so it's it's acting up on me. So uh, let's just uh, walk through this here. Um, this this was the final communication. I'll show you the three. This is the the first one that we did on October the twenty third. Okay, this is the the notice that we sent here. This is all downloadable on my website, uh, www.awarriorcalls.com. Uh, look under the case file numbers, and I believe it's, uh, oh, geez, there's five cases there. I think yours is number four, uh, uh, Tim. Um, excuse me if I'm getting mixed up, but people can simply find them there. It's, okay. uh, it's case number four, I believe, uh, three or yes, four. Yes, it is. Yep, four. So when you go there, these documents that Tim uh, and I prepared and that we sent in as notices, communications to the mayor, these are the same communications that all of you, you can tweak them a bit, but you have to read and understand the words that are being communicated at this time. So again, these are a good little guide for everybody to write to your mirrors, but it always boils down to the same three points that we have here on this page right now. So this is the, uh, the first letter that went on October 23rd. You can see the three points here that we're uh, discussing. Again, you can download these and, re and read these again. Uh, the letter just wraps up. There's another thing that we need to talk about within these communications. We told them that if their officers trespass again, as I'm showing here, it's $25,000 per agent. Plus what we also gave them is information of, of videos that is proving that this COVID is a lie. Okay, these people that are acting as mayor, they are the most ignorant in this world, along with law enforcement, okay? For some reason, they can't seem to take the time and find out what everybody else is seeing and knowing is that this whole COVID psyops, we've all been lied to, okay? And people like Tim, these small businesses that are being told to be locked down or inc incur all these additional draconian measures with interaction with people that are coming into their store to, for use of their products or services is causing havoc right across this country. It's actually destroying businesses we're seeing happening right now in Etobicoke. So this is the first uh, communication that you see. It's a letter basically to the mayor and then there's a notice at the end of liability. And it basically says, I, Tim, of the, his last name family, do hereby give notice liability, produce written verifiable evidence with wet signature immediately that Marianne, that's the woman who was acting as mayor, uh, or any man or woman under her control claim my property. That's the first thing. The three words as I've taught Tim that are very powerful are property, trespass, and who. Second question is uh, required to answer is Marianne or any man or woman under her control can administrate property without right. And the very last point that you put to them is the obligation, the contract that exists with the service corporate and wherever is your municipality name, ours is the city of Burlington, relinquishing my rights. So these people at the city of Burlington, if they're going to come into a store and say that he's bound by these bylaws, remember, these people created them within their own service corporation. It's like McDonald's going creating this nonsense and then coming into your store, say, hey, McDonald's codes or civil bylaw rules of civil procedure, you broke it, Tim. Well, Tim would be like, who the hell are you guys, right? I don't know who you guys are. I've got nothing to do. You want to produce this obligation with your corporation called McDonald's upon which you're relying to come into my store and try and administrate over me? See how simple it is for people to understand that. And this is what Tim got now. So we've done the first notice that was there. This is the second notice that went out on October the 27th. And because we did not get a response, we sent out the second notice. Absolutely, Tim. Great timing there. Well, I got a drink, my friend. Love it. For sure. So, uh, yeah, so we'll just quickly just scroll down through this. It says October the 27th. Here's the second notice that you're giving to them. And as Tim said, they didn't respond to the first notice. So the first one went to them on the 23rd. We got them a second communication on the 24th. You don't allow this to languish, okay, people? You give them three days tops to respond to, and then you hit them back again with another communication. And you get all this on the record. You always copy yourselves on the email so that you have a written copy communication verifying 
that they did receive this. And Tim also copied me on these as well. So the next document goes October 27th. Here's the second notice of liability. Again, it's to the woman. There's the three questions we talked about you're hitting her with. It's basically the same notice again. Okay, all written up here again. You're showing her what the trespass is going to be. It's the same information because we want on the record that this woman has been shown and told that the COVID lie okay, has been given to her. She's got the evidence now. There's a, after this happened, we, I believe I shared with the, the verified doctor, the virologist out of Edmonton. Tim, did you see that video? Um, just briefly. Yeah, it's, it's up on, yeah, it's up on BitChute if anybody wants to watch it. And it's, uh, again, under a warrior calls and it's a incredible. That's what I've been trying to get Tim to put up in his, uh, water store there on a TV and you just run this stuff 24 seven. So that when people yeah. come in, they're going to hear this doctor again, he's a top virologist. He used all the Canadian government's records. He's livid. He totally laid into the people at a city of municipal of Edmonton, uh, a city in, in, uh, uh, Alberta, uh, Canada here. And he yeah. laid right into them professionally exactly of the lies and the deceit that the world is being fed surrounding this virus, that there is no virus. You have one in 300,000 chance of catching it, okay, which is a huge thing. And uh, like I said, it's absolutely incredible. So you should go and search for that video on YouTube. It, you'll find it under a warrior calls. Again, it's a very short four minute video. And that's something that our world needs to be uh, spreading virally right now, because it is very powerful to the truth and the lies that we've all been fed. And it's important that we use this trespass that's occurred against Tim, as you will also use with these people that are coming into your stores or businesses from these service corporations. And you provide this evidence, evidence to them as well, because everybody needs to understand the very simple truth that we've been lied to here okay so as we work our way back through this here uh it goes back to it ends again there's a second most liability it's the exact same thing and there's the three questions otherwise do not trespass they've got to produce the the evidence surrounding these three questions okay and if they don't have it his wet signature they're going to claim that tim's property or they've got a contract with his wet signature and having a business license isn't a contract with these people as I'm teaching people now is that nobody in this world, nobody requires a license to operate a business, okay? This is also part of the massive corruption. If you're gonna operate a business, you go right ahead and operate it in your name and any name that you create, but just remember something. If you ever cause any wrong or harm, a trespass against a man or woman, you're gonna be held liable, okay? It's that simple. Now in the food industry, I realize we need to have a little bit more over protections, you know, at least from a, a cleanliness standpoint that there's a collective that goes around and ensures that these restaurants and that that are at least keeping up their uh, standards as far as cleanliness and that. I have no problem with that. I think everybody would agree with that. And so with the restaurants, but uh, beside anything outside of that, these uh, service corporations, they have no business coming in and telling you how to run your business unless you're breaching the peace, right? And causing wrong or harm to another man or woman. You are to be left alone like Tim and to have a successful business and, and work within your community with your, your fellow man and woman. So Tim's done this all honorably all the way through. So we sent out the second uh, communication notice or whatever. And then it was after this, as Tim said, that we got the communication from the senior bylaw officer. So then after that, we immediately uh, wrote back on the October the 23rd, which would have been, I believe that was the last, what date was this one? So everyone's clear on the, the dates. Yeah, October the 20, oh, sorry, the 27th. That was the last one I've, uh, I, I was the second. Th that yeah. was the second one, yeah. And uh, actually, it says October the 23rd for the third one here. Sorry, that should have been October the 30th, I believe, is the yeah. date that our... Uh, yes. That our, I apologize. I pulled up the wrong one here. Let me just... Uh, uh, that is the this that is the third communication, though. Oh, it is? Yeah. It's just it, for, some, for some reason, I didn't have the... Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I don't want to give that... Uh, Shoot. Yeah, there it is. 30th. Oh, okay. Away from the shirt. Yeah, that was, I think, the first one that we did, and, and then we made corrections. Right. Yeah, actually, it was just the, the, the notice is the same here, but um, I should just to make sure there. So, again, we can just, uh, this has all been redacted out. So, this is the third communication that, that Tim and I uh, prepared and we sent out. Again, I apologize. The date should have been, I just grabbed the wrong. It's on October the 30th, but the communication is the same here. So it starts off as this, uh, Marianne, this is the third, again, from the top, you give the date to them uh, regards trespass by Marianne Mead. That's the woman acting as Marianne people under her control. And this is the third notice liability. Marianne, this is the third communication to a woman who acts as mayor for the service corporation Burlington. I received a communication from a woman, Carrie Davrin, on Wednesday, October the 28th, 2020, at 9.53 a.m. Is Carrie the mayor of the service corporation called Burlington I wrote to, or is Mary Ann? Remember, we were writing communications to the woman who is, who is running the service corporation, not some woman that works in a department 
that has, you know, that's not in charge or have any, uh, has the entire corporation under her control. That's why I always write to the top man or woman, because that's who you hold ultimately liable if they're not going to correct these agents and officers that are working under them, because that's where the buck, that's where the rubber hits the road. So it says, I wrote directly to Miriam Mead to address this trespass. Uh, not people under your control, ignorant of law. And Devron was ignorant of law as she tried to pro uh, purport to Tim in her response. She gave him all these bylaws and codes and statutes that she was saying uh, gave them the jurisdiction to do what they're doing. And that's when you draw down simply that, well, who wrote these bylaw communications that you're claiming have jurisdiction over I? And then you, you ultimately get down to, well, there's a handful of people that wrote them. And unless they're going to come forward on behalf of the service corporation and point to Tim in an open court and say that that man's my property, or again, that they say that we can administrate his property without right, or they've got what, Tim, that obligation, right? Unless they've got that obligation there saying that, uh, that with Tim's wet signature that he's agreed to whatever rules and conditions they're trying to impose upon him, then they have no jurisdiction. And again, that word jurisdiction means control. They have no control over you. So it says legal does not apply to we the people fact. The law of this land is common law and not common legal because all these service corporation agents, they're applying legal, legal terms and legal rules, codes and statutes to we the people because they are obviously ignorant of the separation and difference. Uh, the same applies to another corrupt service corporation called Ontario, who must also produce contract. The city of Burlington is a service corporation, no different than McDonald's, Tim Hortons, Home Depot, etc. And unless Miriam produces the contract with my wet signature relied to trespass as claimed, then carry communication. That's the woman that worked as the senior uh, bylaw officer. Multiple internal PDF policy is pure garbage based on ignorance. And that's what she was producing with Tim and attaching to his email were these PDFs that were just nonsense. So let's be perfectly clear, not Marianne nor any man or woman at this service corporation or any makes laws or binds we the people to such nonsense as presented by Carrie who believes people are property. So that's a very powerful word as Tim is starting to learn that you use that against anyone that's trying to trespass. They must obviously be under the impression that you are their property if they don't have a contract with your wet signature allowing them, giving them that right to do whatever they're acting against you. Remember when people are acting in a role, they have no duty, they have duties and obligations. They do not have rights. Only a man or woman has rights. And you're not ever acting as a man or woman. You're, at, you're always in that capacity unless you're gonna act as something else as you know, a fireman, a policeman, a doctor, or a bylaw officer, or a mayor, right? And that's how quickly it is to simply tear these things down when you realize who these people are and where their jurisdiction, their duties and obligations end where your rights begin, okay? So it's real simple to understand. And so the part that was very disturbing in the letter that Kerry wrote was, Kerry wrote, the issues noted about officer conduct because we were saying that we require an investigation, why this officer was allowed to come into this man's private store his, on his property and harass and intimidate and make an elderly woman cry right? He trespassed against her in a horrific way. So we, re we responded to them, we require a full accounting of this. And she responded back, the issue noted about officer conduct will be investigated as a private personnel matter and no further information will be provided publicly, okay? So what you're seeing here is a woman, as Tim's starting to learn here, I've dealt with this municipality many times over the years, and you find that this is rampant across all of these munici municipal governments is that they have this culture of entitlement, within their society, within their, their corporate structure, that they can basically do whatever they want because they've been getting away with all of this stuff through these nonsense processes that they've created from everything from the, the Planning Act to how their bylaws are created or rules are implemented or et cetera. And that's why it's time that we stop all of this stuff once and for all in its track and we do a hard reset. And what Tim has done here is help let a light forward. And so in finishing it up here, it says, nor was any contract producing carry communication, just PDFs that do not apply to I or we the people. Again, Tuesday, October the 20th, 2020 at 2.30 p.m., two people under Marianne control trespassed without right. These agents under your control are a man, Ibrahim Derbarbi or whatever his name is, and a man, Mike Metcalf. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mike was the gentleman that made the woman uh, very emotional, Tim? Right. right. He approached two of the customers in here. And when the one man that came in, he was a potential customer, um, saw this, he all but ran out of here. Right. And so, like I said, that's why it was important that we did these letters to them because they were threatening to come back to Tim's office the following Monday. That was on a, was that a Tuesday or a Wednesday that they did that, Tim? I believe so. Right. And then they were, they were sending you communications right after they left your office that day after this altercation that they were going to come back and follow up to see that you were following all these bylaws and codes and rules, whatever, on the following Monday. Was that correct? 
Exactly. That's right. So just to recap to everybody, when the first two communications came, the first communication went out, they didn't show up on the Monday. Okay. Cause we hit them with that before the Monday on the Friday. I think they got that. Correct. And then, uh, so they didn't show up on the Monday and then we filed off on the Wednesday. That's when the second communication went off that we got the response from Carrie. And then by the end of the week there, we followed off the third communication to Miriam because she had not responded to obviously these questions. She is required to answer why these people were acting this way in Tim's store. So again, it's the same as we've seen the first, uh, um, three communications, everything else is exactly the same, except for I said, it just changes at the top part here when, uh, because we're addressing now, we're drawing in what Carrie wrote, the actual response that came to Tim. So again, it goes down here and again, we're giving them the information, the knowledge, we're telling them we're, we're reaching our hand out, you know, we're, we're, we're reaching out to help them to say, listen, you got to wake up here. You've all been lied to. We've all been lied to. We're pointing them to the evidence where all the truth lies surrounding, uh, uh, the doctors and that that have come out where it's exposed, which is on my bit shoot, uh, website channel. And then again, we ended again, uh, you know, we, the people are wide awake to the rampant corruption, govern yourselves accordingly. I trust this is crystal clear to the woman, Marion Mead word for the third time and all under her control. I will swear under oath or affirmation that all herein said be true, right? Tim, kind of regards. And then there's the final notice, right? And it's the same things again, that you're requiring her. And otherwise, if they do trespass again, they're going to be fined at $25,000. So that happened, uh, bring it back here, Tim, that happened, yeah. uh, the third communication went out and then what happened was about a, you never heard anything for about a week, correct? Correct. Right. And then all of a sudden you got a communication. Do you want to walk everyone slowly through with the next communication, how they approached you this time? Um, they had, uh, the bylaw officer that originally, uh, talked with me, Abraham, um, and it might be wrong. I apologize for that. Um, so Abraham, um, he called me on, uh, the, uh, my office phone and asked if I could, uh, meet with him outside. Uh, I told him, no, um, you're not allowed on my property. You can come into my store to buy water as a man. You are not allowed in my store or on my property if you are representing the corporation of the city of Burlington. Beautiful. Let's and just, let's just stop there full stop yeah. for a second. The first part, the first key word that Tim used there was what did they, what did he do? He asked, didn't he? Yes. He asked, he was asking Tim now for permission if he could even come and meet with him, not in his store, outside of his store in the parking lot. Okay. So they recognized right away that, uh oh, you know, we can't do this, you know, and now this guy's trying to come back and be honorable, but yet he's still allowing his ignorance, not recognizing that this whole COVID crap, he has no business doing this stuff in the first place. So that's the next hurdle, obviously, that we have to get through. But as I teach people, you don't put the cart before the horse. So we achieve this first thing. Now this man is calling and asking to come to the store and Tim correctly responded to him. He said, no, you're not coming here in any capacity as you oppose, as you appeared before acting as a bylaw officer for the city of Burlington, but you're more than welcome to come here and purchase any water and, and you're welcome in my store in that capacity. So you see Tim is being very honorable there and he's also sticking to his guns to exactly what his three letters of communications spoke to before. Now, since this has all happened, Tim, have you had any problems with the city of Burlington? Have they come back, harassed you since that horrific first trespass? No, they have not been back here that I know of. Um, not during the hours that I am here, which are from uh, Monday to Saturday, from seven in the morning till approximately six at night. That's right. And are you wearing a mask in your store? No. Okay, that's great. So, so this is what I'm saying, people, you know, Tim understands his rights as a man. He understands where his hierarchy is in this world. And hopefully Tim is starting to learn now as I'm teaching people is that none of us require a license to operate a business. Okay. He's a big boy there. Okay. And I'm a big boy here too. We're both, we're both men and, and women that are out there too. We all have every right to operate our business as we see fit. You don't need a license for it. Okay. If Tim, like I said, was in the food business, well then we need to have some sort of oversight, I guess you could say from a cleanliness aspect and all the restaurants, if they're going to pop up that I think everyone would agree with as we talked to earlier, but in this case here, you know, Tim's running a water store, you know, he has uh, all the filtration equipment that's there. And the bottom line is this, is that, you know, where the rubber hits the road for Tim or anybody else is that if he causes wrong or harm to a man or woman because of his products or his services that he's providing to people, then Tim's liable. Okay. Other than that, 
he doesn't require a license to do diddly squat. Okay. And that's why they're trying to use all this licensing that everyone's gone and registered creating foolishly thinking that that's what they, you know, require to run and operate their business in this world. This is what's all got convoluted with all these bylaws because that business that you've registered, it falls under the jurisdiction in the legal world of this higher service corporation called Ontario. But again, this service corporation Ontario doesn't have a carte blanche that they can start going out. For example, as we saw with Paul Hellier the other day on Parliament Hill, he got a ticket. Right. And the ticket is, is in regards to you ready for this. It's called the reopening act, the reopening of Ontario act. Right. This is something that they've just recently written Tim, Right. And it says, and then it's got at the end of it, like as, if there's additions that they can add to it, like it's an open-ended act that they can just keep adding stuff to it. And then they're going to find people for, this is why people need to see the theaters finally out into the, out, out into the light. Okay. People this are seeing is, them, the corruption. This is what they do in communist countries. And that's what they're trying to do here. So, you know, Tim, I'm so grateful for what you've done here for the people. Do you want to, now we know there's some other stores here in Burlington. There's a great restaurant called Sorties that I'm going to try and reach yes. out to as well. They've been around for almost 40 years and they were in the news a few weeks ago. So Tim and I, we're going to do what we can with people around here. Tim, are you familiar with Adam from the barbecue store out in Etobicoke? What's been going on with him the last few days? Yes, I've been uh, trying to keep updated on that. Well, we're, I've reached out to him as well. And hopefully we're going to be able to bring everybody together on this in the very near future, because this is a wonderful moment. You know, I talked about it already, but I want to talk about it again here today is that, you know, just as Tim has been acting honorable, you know, in all his communications and how he's dealt with these people at the city, right? Because we have to realize we've all been lied to. We got to take a higher road for those of us that are awake. You've got to feel sorry for your fellow man and them, even if they're still coming at you trespassing, you've got to stand your ground firmly and honorably as Tim has done here. You see that nothing in his communications when you download them off my website have been done with malice or intent or we're making any type of vile threats to anybody, but we're letting them know, look, you've done this now. We've given you three notices. Do not show up on my property again, or you're contracting with me. That's what ultimately the trespass means is that you've read the terms and conditions to come onto this man's property. It doesn't matter if it's at Tim's store or if it's at a farmer's field that's out there and these signs are hanging up. Wherever these signs hang in front of a man or woman's place with is their property, you have to respect them. And if you breach those those rules, you know, then you're going to, it's like contracting. You're going to be held accountable to that fine because you're not going to be able to deny that you were not told or shown as we've done here with Tim. So in closing, Tim, do you want to give some, some wonderful words of encouragement to other business owners out there at this time that may be going through similar, you know, uh, frustrations with the municipalities that they work for and how they should begin this process to let them know that you're going to hold them accountable one way or another. And this is how we come together and, and address this wrong and harm. Yeah, we need all to stick together. We need to help each other out where we can. Um, if anybody is having issues, go to your website um, and download the papers that we have uh, sent off and use that as a, a uh, template to start the process. Um, don't let them bully you. Don't let them um, push you around, stand your ground. Things will work out. Things will come your way. Um, you can't let them run your business. You can't let them try to put us into a socialist communist, uh, country. Uh, we need to prevent that. And this is where we start right now. And if you, if this isn't happening to you, but you can help out uh, people that um, this is happening to, please help them out. Um, however you can with the knowledge, with downloading, uh, printing off paperwork and telling them here, this is the route you need to take and try to make it public and let everybody know. Uh, the more people that know, the better it is. We all need to see this light and, and uh, put a stop to what they are trying to do with this scandemic and everything else that is going on. Absolutely, Tim. Absolutely. So I, I would just, again, just like to thank you so much, Tim. You're a dear friend of me. You're like a brother from another mother. And uh, I'm so proud to have met you. And like I said, that's great that we came together. Everything in this world happens for a reason. I truly believe that. Exactly. And, uh, it was, it's been a wonderful situation for you and I to share with people 
uh, what has gone on here. Oh, actually, before we go, just tell people, you know, that how people from around the world have reached out to you. You know, some of the really oh. wonderful things that people have done you told me about. Yeah, I've had people uh, calling me from out west, Alberta, um, and they all are, you know, going through the same thing, lockdowns and, and being told how to run their business and they're not allowed to do this, they're not allowed to do that. Um, I have had calls from every province, I think, uh, in uh, Canada. And uh, I even had um, a couple people from Australia call. Um, I believe there was one call from South America. Um, I'm getting quite a few calls and uh, it's, uh, it's been unbelievable uh, to see that so many people have uh, seen things and are backing you up and, and saying, good, you know, don't let them push you around, stick to your guns, you know. It's always nice to hear people uh, back you up rather than people that uh, just think that uh, this is what we should be doing. Um, let everybody else run our businesses and run our lives, you know, um, which is just ludicrous. Yeah. So it's been marvelous with the, the people reaching out. And uh, we try to talk with everybody that uh, does reach out. Sometimes you're busy and, uh, you know, I'm on the phone so they can leave a message or call back. But uh, I try to make sure that I uh, touch base with everybody and um, thank them for um, backing us up. And, and uh, it, the encouraging words are just, uh, sometimes overwhelming yeah yeah it's really beautiful that's what I mean Tim it's that's the experience I've gone through as well as when I stepped into this and started coming out into the light here you know it's your phone starts to ring and you get communications from people all over the world and then you realize that you are not alone truly that you realize that there are millions of people out there that feel and understand and know the same things that are in your heart and that's why when we're bringing this truth through, this is why this communication is so important. We're doing everyone. It's a communication that needs to be brought out to the forefront from, from all these interactions that we're having with police, especially right now. And once we engage in this conversation and we get the foundational truth laid out that they've not been given, then all this stuff is going to go away. So I just want to, again, thank you very much, Tim, on behalf of uh, everybody for stepping up to the plate here. And we'll keep everybody up to date as we move forward with these other things in, locally in oh. Burlington here. Because I want people to know that Tim's committed himself to me to help uh, in any way he can to bring other oh, businesses online. So, for we'll sure, have, we'll do and that I, in the future. I I have also I have to uh, do um, a shout out to a few people um, that are coming from um, another town. Um, there's a few people from Oakville that come and just want to support, and so they're buying. Uh, vitamins that uh, I sell um, and water, water plans, um, a cooler, you know, it, it's just uh, remarkable on the support and uh, them people that are making that extra effort to back up a small business guy. Yep. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm so glad to hear that for you too, Tim, because you deserve it and all of us deserve it. Let that be a light to everybody to just show you that, you know, when you stand in truth, there's millions of people out there of your fellow man that understand this truth too. They are going to come and stand with you. And it's demonstrated in many different capacities surrounding Tim. It's not just getting, as he said, you know, the, the phone calls or the written support. People are actually, you know, putting the metal where their, you know, money where their mouth is. And they're actually driving quite a substantial difference to Tim's store to actually get product from him. And that speaks louder than anything to this truth that's resonating right now to our yes. fellow man. So, I'll say good night for now, Tim, and we'll bring you back on in the next few weeks again as it's going to get exciting, as you know, with uh, the stuff that's happening with uh, oh, yeah. Adam and the barbecue place. But once we start to bring all these business owners together and we're all under the hood, and then we come out into the light with this one consecutive message, as I've demonstrated, that's been presented here from you to the mayor of uh, the city of Burlington, this is the same conversation that's going to happen. It's those same three questions. It's the same three questions that Doug Ford's got to answer. It's the same three questions that Justin Trudeau's got to answer. It's the same three questions. And when they can't answer them, then they're exposed that not a damn thing that they put pen to paper applies to we the people. 
just as Tim and I have demonstrated here with the Service Corporation Burlington, where he's been completely left alone now. He's back to running his business as he sees fit, and he's here to be and support the public in any way, uh, in every way, shape, and form, but he's doing it honorably, and he's doing it standing in truth. So from my heart to yours, Tim, thank you very much, and uh, have a wonderful evening. Same to you, Chris.